everyone. Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, this uh, preprint that came out like last month, I think. And it's called A Study of Gene Expression of the Living uh, Human Brain. Mm. Okay. Um, a little bit of an introduction. Uh, as we know, for molecular research focusing on the brain, uh, postmodern tissue has become like the standard source because of the obvious difficulty of uh, getting uh, living uh, tissue from, from the brain. Um, so the molecular, the molecular research um, of the brain is based in the assumption that the postmortem tissue is an accurate representation of the living brain at a molecular level. And uh, the objective of, um, well, the goal of the paper is to address whether this assumption is true or not uh, mm -hmm. through the comparison of human uh, prefrontal cortex gene expression between the living and, uh, well, between living and postmortem uh, samples. So uh, first, uh, the living brain project cohort uh, involved obtaining prefrontal cortex samples from living participants during um, a neurosurgical procedure for it's called, um, well, it's for deep brain stimulation and it's a, a treatment for neurological and mental illnesses. And the tissue used in the paper will have otherwise been cauterized. So it didn't require like an extra extraction of uh, brain tissue. And um, in addition, uh, they assemble like a herd of postmortem samples obtained from three brain banks. And um, after applying like quality control and yeah, like normal procedures, uh, the full uh, LBP cohort can see steady of uh, around 500 uh, samples from which uh, 275 belong to uh, living brain tissue and uh, 243 uh, belong to postmortem donors. Um, so, once having the cohort, they made a differential expression analysis where the trait like of primary interest were, was uh, the living postmortem status. And this means uh, whether a sample belonged to a living participant or a postmortem uh, donor. Um, so the results uh, show that around 80% of the genes were differential expressed with around um, 9,000 significant um, genes more expressing living samples related to postmortem, and around 8,000. It, it was, I don't know if I say 800, but it's 9,000. Um, mm -hmm. And around 8,000 more highly expressed in postmortem tissue relative to uh, the living samples. Okay. So um, given those results and the important implications they could have. Uh, the authors wanted to establish if the living postmortem uh, differential express signature was truly a consequence of uh, the live uh, PM status, uh, live being the living sample and PM the postmortem ones, and not because of any like co-founding variables influencing the gene expression. Uh, the variables identified and tested are like these 12, I'm not gonna go through all of them, um, but in general, they included disease-related variables because uh, the samples were from, most of them were, were from uh, people with Parkinson's disease um, and methodology uh, variables and quality variables. Uh, they actually didn't find any of these 12 variables significant affecting or related to um, the leave PMD signature. Hence, um, this signature is a consequence of the living or postmortem status of the samples. Um, then uh, they investigated the biological processes affected by these uh, living postmortem status. And first, they examined the expression of housekeeping genes, which are vital for, for cell survival. And the analysis revealed a significant overlap between the living uh, differential expressions and the housekeeping genes. 
but in contrast, um, the postmortem list of differential expressions did not show, um, <coughs> sorry, a significant overlap with uh, the housekeeping genes. Uh, then they also made an enrichment analysis with um, the CAG uh, database. Um, and for the LIV, uh, the genes, the gene sets were primarily related to protein translation and cellular representation. And in contrast, um, a lot more genes as were well identified in the postmortem uh, DE, the differential expressions. And notably, um, the transcription factor CAG gene set showed uh, the most significant enrichment. Uh, none of the CAG sets enriched in the postmortem um, differential expressions were enriched in the living uh, differential expressions. And well, these findings suggest that gene expression regulation, including uh, the activity of transcription factors, um, plays a role like in shaping the uh, the living postmortem differential express signature. Um, and that is like a suggestion. So they wanted to confirm those findings um, about like the gene expression re regulation in postmortem tissue. Um, so they analyze active inhibitors and actively regulated genes in the uh, postmortem cohort. And they discovered that these active, actively regulated genes were significantly enriched in the postmortem uh, differential expressions, but not in the uh, living uh, differential expressions. And in summary, they, this analysis from this slide and the previous one uh, revealed that the living uh, postmortem differential expression signature is associated with uh, the differential expression of housekeeping genes and the enrichment of um, diverse like, biological processes, including transcriptional regulation and gene expression controlled by active inhibitors, uh, mostly present in the uh, postmortem uh, tissue. Um, then uh, they tested the oh sorry okay <laughs> then they tested the the hypothesis that uh, the gene gene relationships in the living brain differ from the gene re relationships in the postmortem brain. Um, to do this, they made like a purely I think mathematical uh, methodology. Uh, where they made like a correlation with um, the, they, they made a matrix uh, with the person correlation coefficients for every pair of genes in, in both groups and then calculated uh, the difference between these both matrices, matrices and, and yeah, got this leave PM uh, correlation difference matrix. And with these, um, they discovered, well, they compared these uh, correlation difference matrix to uh, uh, multiple null correlation difference matrices as controls. And with this comparison, uh, they discovered that the gene-gene relationship uh, through the transcriptome differ between the living samples and the PM samples. But uh, some values of these matrix were close to zero, meaning that maybe some like organizational features of the transcriptome uh, are conserved between the living and the PM tissue. But uh, when investigating the genes of these of yeah that belong to these features, uh, most of them belong to differential expressions, confirming that although some organizational features of the brain are conserved between the living and the postmortem tissue, the expression level differs between them. This was a little bit confusing for me, but what it means is just that, uh, I think, <laughs> um, the, the relationship between gene and gene in some cases is conserved, but this doesn't mean then that the expression level is also conserved between the living and the uh, postmortem tissue. Um, 
And well, uh, so far, the results like show that the postmortem uh, human brain uh, tissue may not be accurately reflecting uh, the molecular state of living human brain. Um, this, of course, raises like a concern from about the accuracy of disease focused research derived from from postmortem uh, samples. So to investigate this, they compared uh, the differential expressed signature of living brain samples to postmortem signatures of Alzheimer's disease, uh, schizophrenia, and Parkinson's disease. Uh, analysis of uh, the differential express signatures in all the disease cohorts demonstrated that the genes with higher expression in disease cases significantly overlap with postmortem uh, differential expressions, while genes with higher expression in controls overlap with living uh, the genes. And well, we, we would expect the opposite if it was like a really good representation of what we have from the cohorts with Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, Parkinson's disease. And these findings indirectly support the hypothesis that postmortem uh, differential expressing matters do not accurately represent the processes occurring in the living brain um, with these uh, phenotypes. Then uh, to directly test that hypothesis, they explored um, age as a phenotype and they, they wanted to do it with diseases too, but um, given the difficulty of getting the samples, they, they couldn't. Um, and they found that the differential expressed signature of the human age in postmortem uh, prefrontal cortex um, changed uh, based on the living or postmortem status of the brain samples. And found like similar patterns overlapping, yeah, overlapping patterns between, well, when using this age phenotype and the previous uh, disease uh, phenotypes. And in general, these results suggest that uh, the differential express signature identified in postmortem human brain are not accurate representations of uh, disease processes occurring, occurring in um, living human brain. Mm. And so I'm, 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 yeah, almost done. <laughs> but uh, continuing with the disease related analysis, given the fact that uh, the gene expression data from postmortem brain samples have been like widely used to gain insights into the pathogenesis of neurological and mental illnesses, it is important to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, different sample types. Uh, in capturing disease mechanisms. So they constructed separate Parkinson disease networks from living and postmortem samples to determine which better reflects the Parkinson disease pathogenesis. And to do this, they used genes identified in uh, Parkinson disease GWAS, and they tested the uh, Parkinson disease specific structures for enrichment. And none of the postmortem uh, structures showed significant enrichment, while um, six uh, living uh, Parkinson's disease structures exhibit significant enrichment, with two remaining significant after uh, multiple test correction. And while well, these findings indicate that gene expression data from living brain samples better capture uh, the pathogenesis of, of neurological and mental illnesses uh, compared to the um, postmortem samples. And Thank you. Yeah, I think I think what they wanted to show is that uh, like this difference between uh, the PM uh, Parkinson's disease structure and the living. Um, and yeah, even though only two uh, remain significant after adjusting for p-value. Okay, thank you. Um, and yeah, so in general, this paper uh, contributes to science 
um, by maybe introducing like a safe uh, approach to studying living brain um, and establishing that the molecular signatures of the PM brain do not accurately uh, represent diseases processes in the living brain. Uh, but there are some limitations. Um, there are no uh, samples from healthy donors and a specific like neurological and psychiatric conditions because as I mentioned, the samples were from uh, most of them from uh, Parkinson's disease uh, um, patients. Uh, so yeah, a lot of analysis and yeah, are, are, are need to be done. Um, and yes, perspective, perspectives. Um, they say that like obtaining brain biopsies during neurosurgery or other general neuro procedures can uh, help to uh, have more um, human brain representation, human living brain representation in uh, molecular research. But um, I don't know. I think it's difficult to obtain this from uh, healthy donors. So I don't know. It's a it's a good <laughs> it's a good paper. <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, I think that's it. <laughs>